very good. Let us see. Hello there. This is Shankaran and with me is Pooja. Hi. And we are back with the concept of physics for you. And for that, I want you all to look very carefully at the road. Can you see that? It seems like we are driving in a river. Can you look carefully? As you're going closer, layer by layer is actually disappearing. There goes a layer. Right. And, and see the next layer, right? This is amazing, right? Don't you feel we should understand how exactly this happens? And for that, my friend here, Pooja, is going to take you to a dessert. So, are you guys ready? Now, seeing water on a highway is one thing. But imagine a thirsty traveler traveling in a desert, he sees water. There is nothing more miserable than that, right? Let's understand why this happens. Basically what happens is, during day the land becomes hot. Because of that, the air molecules above are warm. But as you go up, it keeps on becoming cooler and cooler. That means, right now at this level, if I hold my hand like this, I can clearly see the difference. That is, my lower hand is much more warmer in comparison to the above hand which is much more cooler. So what we have understood is the layer at the bottom is more warmer but as you go up it gradually keeps on becoming cooler and cooler. Now the light from the sun hits the object. The tree there is the object. After hitting the object, the light will reflect and it will enter the first layer. Now the first layer is denser. Now as and when the light is going from denser to rarer, it will keep on bending away from the normal. So at each layer what you see is the light is bending away from the normal. But at one point, what you will notice is light will hit at an angle which is greater than critical angle. And at that point, instead of light undergoing refraction, the light will undergo total internal reflection and enter my eye. Now once it enters my eye, human eye always perceives that Brenda, are you listening? Brenda? Yes, teacher. Are you listening? Yes, I'm listening. We have said total internal reflection, okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> light always travels in a straight line. So now I can see the reflection there at the bottom. So the reflection of the tree is there. Similarly, the reflection of the cloud is also seen there and that appears like water. So that is how mirage takes place. So let's summarize the key points. For mirage to occur, there has to be total internal reflection. And for total internal reflection, there has to be two conditions that needs to be fulfilled. The first one is light should always enter from denser medium to rarer medium. And the second condition is very simple. Light should hit at an angle which is greater than critical angle. So here are some amazing mirages that happen in nature. Now you have you have watched very well, okay? So that's what we call mirage. That's what we call mirage. And next time you remember that video, that total internal reflection has to take place, okay? All right. <laughs> Let's go to optical fibers. I've I've been explaining about optical fibers, and I've told you that optical fibers also total internal reflection takes place within the inner surface or the inner boundary or the inner material or media inside that optical fiber. So light will enter, and then because it is coming, uh, because the light uh, enters into that transparent ma material material that is coated inside with another less optically dense medium so this what does this one mean so it means that inside an optical fiber there are two layers the the layer that is outside that is inside but outside eh? <laughs> okay that one that is dotted that layer that is dotted for it it is more optically dense and the inner layer, the inner layer here, the inner layer hmm, that makes up that cylinder there, that inner layer, for which it is less opt optically dense. So it means that the ray of light as it travels, first it will travel through air, but as it travels, it is going to find two layers, the more optically dense and the less optically dense. The more optically dense is the layer it hits first, 
and the less optically dense is the layer that is inside. So because it's coming from, it enters to a more optically dense to a less optically dense. So it will, <clears throat> total internal reflection will occur and the ray will be reflected, be reflected in the optically dense medium. So there will be uh, continuous reflections within that, uh, that optical fiber up to the end of the pipe. And the image or the incident ray will emerge out from the end of the pipe. So if you have an, an object which is this side, that object can be seen from this end. So these optical fibers are used in cardoscopes by doctors to see what is inside a human body. For example, if you swallow, if you swallow a seed, now for me, you know, if you swallow a, 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 let's say, a maize seed, but that one is very small, even can germinate, you know, cannot germinate. But if you swallow like a coin or a nut, a metallic nut, you are likely to go to the hospital, then you see a cardoscope. They will insert it through your garret or through your esophagus. Eh? <laughs> or through your, or what, pressure, or what, and then to the stomach, okay? And then they will see that thing, and then when they, they will move it using their things that they use. I don't know what they are called. You need to start becoming doctor. Sandra, have you heard? You need to be a doctor one day. I don't know, you have not studied biology, but you need to be one. So, optically dense, material to a less dense material, the ray of light will be totally internally reflected. So optical fibers are also used in telecommunication systems. We have seen even the, yeah, right now, even the internet we are using here, they use optical what? They use optical fibers. They use optical fibers, that one you should know. So they are wires, there are no wires there, but they are just fibers. Maybe the wire which is there is just to, I would have showed you that an optical fiber, but I can show you. Some of you don't know, I know. Bre Emma, 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 are you there? Let me ask Emma. Emma, Emma. Emma. Yeah. Do you know an optical fiber? Hmm? These ones, these are optical fibers. Wow. So they 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 are not. I don't think that they are wires. They are no no no. Just things made out of plastic, something like that. So they carry light. They carry data in form of light, and they are the fastest. Even they are better than DC, MTN, and what. These ones, which use masts, they are better than those ones. because for them the internet is connected. Now we have internet data cables that are running. Let me show you. We have internet cables that run within the ocean. Internet cables. In, did I say in ocean? In oceans to Africa, I think we have. Otherwise, at time T internet went off. And we have their internet cables that run from, from Europe. Uh, there are no images that can show me, but they are there that run from Europe to Africa. And they run within, at the bottom of the sea. Yeah? Or others, yes, at the bottom of the sea. Oh, just know that this piece is so wonderful. You just have to spark glue on the thing. If you want it, you get it. They say that you aim for the you aim for the stars and you land on the moon. Okay. So it means that if you aim for something higher, you get something that is higher. They may not achieve the other one, but at least you get somewhere higher. So there are internet cables that run within the ocean. Okay. Okay, optical fibers, optical, optical, today we are ending at five, I think so, optical fibers, so prepare enough data, optical fibers, videos, 
and see if there is one optical fibers, how they do work. Let us see. Have you ever thought about it? First of all, are you hearing the, the sound? Do you hear the sound? Sound. Yes, teacher. You guys, are you there? You can keep, okay, let me play. I think you can hear. Can you get emails or any other information from any corner of the world within a blink of an eye? Let's start from the beginning. Have you ever thought about how you get emails or any other information from any corner of the world within a blink of an eye? This has been made possible by a network of cables, which are laid under the ground and below the ocean. The cables, which carry most of the world's data, are optical fiber cables. They are also used in medical equipment. Let's learn how optical fiber cables work and how they have revolutionized the world around us. Optical fiber cable is made up of thousands of fiber strands, and a single fiber strand is as thin as a human hair. Optical fibers carry information in the form of light. Let's first learn some fundamental behaviors of light to understand the workings of optical fibers. The speed of light changes when it passes through a medium, and this change in speed is expressed by the refractive index. This variation in the speed of the light leads to another interesting phenomenon, refraction. To understand what it is, let us carry out an interesting experiment. In this experiment, light passes through a prism. You can see that at the interface, the light gets bent instead of going straight. This phenomenon is known as refraction. Refraction occurs when light passes from a medium with one refractive index to one with another refractive index. The light bends towards the interface when it goes from a medium of high to one of low refractive indices. Refraction is the reason why a pencil looks bent in a glass of water. This simple refraction technique is effectively used in optical fibers. Now, let's make this experiment a hypothetical one. Using some dopants, we are able to increase the refractive index of the glass in real time. As we increase the refractive index, the light will bend more and more towards the surface. After a time, you can see that the light will pass through the surface of the glass. If we increase the refractive index further, the light will suddenly come back to the first medium as a pure reflection. This is called total internal reflection. The total internal reflection is possible if we increase the incident angle rather than increasing the refractive index. In this case, at a certain angle called the critical angle, the light will come back to the first medium. This phenomenon of total internal reflection is used in optical fiber cables to transmit the light. The simplest form of optical fiber cable is shown here, cylindrical glass with a high refractive index. If the laser strikes the interface at an angle greater than the critical angle, total internal reflection will happen and the light will reach the other end. This means that light can be confined in the optical fiber over a long distance, no matter what complex shape the fiber forms. Remember, total internal reflection happens between the high refractive index glass and the low refractive index air. However, optical fibers need a protective coating. A protective coating is not possible with this configuration. The introduction of protective material will replace the position of the air and cease the total internal reflection phenomenon. An easy way to overcome this issue is to introduce a low refractive index glass above the core glass, known as cladding. This way, total internal reflection will happen and we will be able to use a protective layer. Both the core and the cladding use silica as their base material. The difference in the refractive index can be achieved by adding different types of dopants. The optical fiber we have just constructed won't be able to carry signals for more than 100 kilometers. This is due to various losses that happen in the cable. This loss of signal strength is generally called attenuation. Absorption and scattering are the main reasons for signal attenuation. This is why you see amplifiers in cables after a certain distance. 
They boost the signal's strength and allow signals to be transmitted over a long distance. The power required for the amplifier is drawn from nearby sources. Now, back to the main topic. How does the optical fiber transmit information such as phone calls or internet signals? Any information can be represented in the form of zeros and ones. Assume you want to send a hello text message through your mobile. First, this word will be converted into an equivalent binary code as a sequence of zeros and ones. After the conversion, your mobile phone will transmit these zeros and ones in the form of electromagnetic waves. One is transmitted as a high frequency and zero as low frequency wave. Your local cell tower picks up these electromagnetic waves. At the tower, if the electromagnetic wave is of high frequency, a light pulse is generated. Otherwise, no pulse is generated. Now, these light pulses can easily be transmitted through optical fiber cables. The light pulses which carry the information have to travel through a complicated network of cables to reach their destination. For this purpose, the entire globe is covered with optical fiber cables. These cables are laid under the ground and below the ocean. It is mainly the mobile service providers that maintain these underground cables. AT&T, Orange, and Verizon are some of the few global players who own and maintain the submarine cable network. A detailed cross-section view of an undersea cable is shown here. You can see that only a small portion of the cable is used for holding the optical fiber. The remaining area of the cable is a mechanical structure for protection and strength. Now, the question is, where does the amplifier get power from under these deep oceans? Well, for this, a thin copper shell is used inside the cable, which carries electric power along the cable so that the amplifiers can be powered. This whole discussion simply means that if optical fiber cables do not reach a part of the globe, that part will be isolated from the internet or mobile communications. If we compare optical fiber cable to traditional copper cable, the optical fiber cable is superior in almost every way. Fiber optic cables provide larger bandwidth and transmit data at much higher speeds than copper cables. This is because the speed of light is always greater than the speed of electrons. The flow of electrons in a copper cable generates a magnetic field, even outside of the cable, that can cause electromagnetic interference. On the other hand, the light, which travels through the optical cable, is always confined within the fiber. Thus, the chance of interaction with an external signal does not exist. One more interesting feature about optical fiber cables is that any light signal which enters from the side has a minimal chance of traveling along the cable. Thus, the optical fiber cables provide high data security. You might be amazed to know that optical fiber was first used in endoscopy, even before it was used in the telecommunications field. In telecommunications, digital pulses are transferred through the optical fiber cable. However, in endoscopic cables, visual signals, which are in the analog form, are transmitted to the other end. We request your support at Patreon.com to help us continue our education services. And thank you for watching the video. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> How was <is> it? How was <laughs> it? Brenda, Brenda. Yes, teacher. Yes, how was it? Did you understand why uh, optical fibers are used? Yes. Yeah, then, copper, then copper cables, how they work. So <clears throat> that has been a good illustration. So next time you go to YouTube and you look for this channel called Lessics. If there are very many, there are very many videos. They are explaining very many things of physics. And then you understand how optical fibers work. All right. So I've told you optical fibers pass over the at the at the base of the of the earth the oceans at the bottom of the oceans okay where were we we are here now come back here so we are now going to pass sky radio waves this one we shall not say video but this one i know i don't think you know how it works because this is this is a very okay so sky radio waves <clears throat> i don't know how it works <clears throat> ah you hear sound yeah.
Now you have a phone, even you never ask yourself, how does this phone work? Hmm? Sandra. Yes. Which thing do you know in life that you know how it works? Of course, all of them I first learn how to, how they use them, then that's how I know how they work. Like what? Like the TV, eh? you know how it works, eh? <laughs> Yes. Eh? You know? <laughs> yes. Huh. Hey. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, I'm talking about a flat screen, not a Sierra O. Because I'm using knowledge for Sierra O. <laughs> yes, a flat screen yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Then you should know how the radio wave, how sky radio waves uh, do operate. From one from one mast or from one long one mast to another. So how do they operate? How? So I'm saying that radio sky waves, as uh, radio radio waves sets, radio wave sets sky sent sky what? What is this? So radio waves are sent to the sky from a station A and continuously are reflect refracted away from the normal as they enter the ionosphere or the Appleton layer. The Appleton layer exists above the Earth. So the Appleton layer has got very many layers there. She has got the ionosphere, she has got the hemisphere, it has the meta metosphere. So we have the Appleton layer. So that's within the ionosphere or the Appleton layer. The wave is totally internally reflected, causing it to emerge from the ionosphere and finally to a distant area away from where it came from. So at a distant point away from where it came from, maybe at point B. So finally, someone who's at point B is able to detect those radio waves. So you have to know that there is total internal reflection that occurs beyond space there, above the, above the Earth's surface in the Appleton layer. And these radio waves are refracted. Let us see how they happen. If someone wants to see, I know. That's not that. So let's see. Let me see whether this guy has got those videos. Uh, so there are very many physics things here in his channel uh, compared to our channel where we have only lessons. So you can see even they are good for making projects. If you go to the university and you are doing physics, these are nice projects you can do. Even now, right now you can make projects, uh, electromagnetism, what? So let me just search something else here. Let me see whether it has uh, sky radio waves. Sky. There is, let me ask, Sandra, do you do computer? Sandra? Yes. Do you do computer? I do it. Uh-huh. If you do computer. Yes. Do you know what we call RAM? Do you know what a RAM is? RAM? Yes. Yes, I know it. What's RAM? Hmm? What's RAM? What's RAM in the pool? Random. Random what? Okay. Access memory. Okay, okay. That is true. Sky, I'm not seeing sky radio waves members. Let us see propagation of magnetic waves part one. Maybe this one, propagation of magnetic waves. Yeah, let us see this. <coughs> Still same person. <coughs> if there is anything that you know in life, I can make money. Because I've recorded this lesson. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me play this. The details of which are given in table. The degree of ionization varies with the height. The density of atmosphere decreases 
with height. At great heights, the solar radiation is intense, but there are few molecules to be ionized. Close to the Earth, even though the molecular concentration is very high, the radiation intensity is low, so that the ionization is again low. However, at some intermediate heights, there occurs a peak of ionization density. The ionospheric layer acts as a reflector for a certain range of frequencies, 3 to 30 megahertz. Electromagnetic waves of frequencies higher than 30 megahertz penetrate the ionosphere and escape. These phenomena are shown in the figure. The phenomenon of blending of EM waves so that they are diverted towards the Earth is similar to total internal reflection in optics. Space wave. Another mode of radio wave propagation is by space waves. A space wave travels in a straight line from transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna. Space waves are used for line of sight LOS communication as well as satellite communication. At frequencies about 40 MHz, communication is essentially limited to line of sight paths. At these frequencies, the antennas are relatively similar and can be placed at heights of many wavelengths above the ground. Because of line of sight nature of propagation, direct waves get blocked at some point by the curvature of the Earth, as illustrated in figure. If the signal is to be received beyond the horizon, then the receiving antenna must be high enough to intercept the line of sight waves. So what he's talking if about, this is very, this, is, this one is possible if at all these masks are not far away from each other. <clears throat> but if you, if you have one mast maybe in Africa and another mast, is in Europe, you cannot achieve this because that is a bigger distance. So this cannot happen. It only happens if the masts are next to each other. Now, like in Uganda here, you can have a mast in Entebbe and another mast, maybe it is at, let me see, where, 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 where can I see? Maybe at, we are still very far. Let's say here in Bugorovi, we all know Bugorovi, of course, let us come back home. You know where Gorovi is, and another mast is at maybe Motuongo. So that is a shorter distance. So uh, these uh, these waves that are on a surface, they occur just for a short distance because the mast must be in great position to, uh, to receive the waves uh, from one another. They must be in a, almost uh, a smaller distance. Compared to the if the transmitting antenna is at a height h t, then you can show that the distance to the horizon d t is given as d t equals to that is, that square root of, of two r h t, where r is the radius of the Earth, approximately six thousand four horizon of the transmits. D and a charge equals probably that you yeah. was not good grammar and spelling are more important. But if you want to write essays that inspire okay. messages waves. that forge you have seen what sky radio waves are. Sky radio waves, they are just maybe just get to the picture. So sky This video I've titled Radio Propagation 101. It will give you a basic understanding of radio propagation. As ham radio operators, we've all seen propagation reports like this. But what do they really mean? High frequency. If we can't see anything that is animated, then we leave this chapter. Welcome to Kodan Radio Communications. This video is part of a series on radio fundamentals. waves that Marconi used were the high frequency so or the HF radio, radio, radio waves. waves. How does HF radio technology work? A transmitting antenna shown as TX emits the HF radio waves and a receiving antenna shown as RX receives these radio waves. There are three types of HF radio waves. 
ground wave, which is good for short distance communication at less than 20 kilometers. It follows the curvature of the Earth and is therefore attenuated. Direct wave, which can be used for long distance communication between ground stations and aircraft. And finally, okay. stop there. You can see that uh, when you go back and check on YouTube. Now, prism binoculars. The prism binoculars, it, is also, it also uses uh, total internal reflection, the prism binoculars. So they're saying that these prisms A and B are essentially right angle D uh, prisms with their reflective surfaces facing each other. So A causes lateral inversion of the image formed by the object. So you can say this is A causing lateral inversion. Uh, don't tell me that you also want to see this. So A causes lateral inversion, and then B causes what we call vertical inversion. And finally, the image is the same way how it was. So A and B reflect the light, each through 180 degrees, making, the, making it effective in telescopes three times the distance between the object and the eyepiece. Binoculars, there it is. If you want to get more about binoculars, go to Google, YouTube, and put in binoculars. What is it? Put in prism binoculars. Prism, prism, binoculars. If you have no data, prism binoculars, total internal reflection. Oh, wow, this is dangerous. It's in binoculars. It's in binoculars. Once I made a video, it's in binoculars. How? How it works? Ah, by five. Let me see this one. Let us see this one. Maybe. Binoculars are used in the same way as a refracting telescope to observe distant objects. They enable us to observe the object with both eyes, so the image is spatial. Another obvious difference is the fact that binoculars with the same magnification as a refracting telescope are much shorter and therefore much more convenient to use. The length of a refracting telescope is determined by the sum of the focal lengths of the objective lens and the eyepiece what lens. Is the In binoculars, on the other hand, the path of the rays so is reversed twice that's as a result of reflections within the prisms. In this way, the required distance between the objective lens and the eyepiece that's lens the can be shortened. The we see that image. This is where the light is coming from. Yeah. So the first time that this, this prism here will cause lateral inversion, and this one will cause vertical inversion. So that way you see them, they are, they are not inserted in the same way. But these, these, these faces, this face is facing this one here. So this one, the first one causes, what happened to me is that the first one causes uh, lateral inversion, and the second one causes vertical Inversion. So the object, I mean the image, undergoes uh, a reflection of 180 degrees, and the final image is the same as the object. Yeah. Any question? Any question? That. Okay, but there are other sophisticated, there are other sophisticated, um, very sophisticated, now like this one here. Actually, this one is going to show us how it works, so we are not interested to show us how. how Let us go back to our lesson. Yeah. So advantages of prisms over plane mirrors. Number one, 
prisms do not have silvered surfaces, so they, they cannot wear off. So the, that means that they, ca they are very durable uh, and they they stay longer. So silvering on a plain mirror wears off with the time, but no silvering on the prism. So that means that prisms are very durable because they have no silvering. So there is also no loss in the prism. Why? Why is there no loss? Because in the prism, it is only total internal reflection that takes place. So the light energy is not lost as compared to plane mirrors. For plane mirrors, there is both the reflection and refraction taking place within the plane mirror. Because I told you that the plane mirror, it is a piece of glass, but at the bottom, that's where it is silvered. And lastly, plane mirrors form multiple images, whereas prisms do not. So when we end this lesson, we come back for this last chapter, which is determination of the refract refractive image of the liquid using the air cell. Okay, give you a break of just one or two minutes, and then we come back. Is it okay, Brenda? Friend Sandra, Emma? Yes?